Hey, what is up, guys? Ghost Gaming here. And today, I'm going to be doing a reshoot of a previous video. And it's come to my attention in the previous video that has already been taken down a little over a month ago. Um, I have a rambling problem when I start recording. So, I'm trying out a new way of recording by slightly and loosely scripting my videos. I tried to not script my videos because, well, I was just dumb. But, so, today we're going to be talking about why should you play Genshin Impact? This world that has been created by a company called Mahoyo, Genshin Impact, the island that we're on is called Tevat. It's a very fun game, not gonna lie, and the reason why you should play it there is multiple, and we'll get into that right now. The first thing to know is the world design. Now, Genshin Impact is a huge map. I mean, like, so far, we only have three key areas and the map is already massive. Like, you have all of Mondstadt right here. Then you have all of Liyue right here. Then you have Dragonspine. Now, I'll get into each individual um, place briefly in this video. If you guys want to see a more in-depth dive on what this game truly is, I will definitely put out that video. So let's start off with Mondstadt. So in Mondstadt, there are a couple of key things. World design. And this is just goes for all of Genshin Impact. The world design itself is phenomenal. Beautiful. Like, you can see it during the day, and then I can switch it to closer to nighttime, like after sunset, right? And it'll still look good. Like, look at that. Like, the sky itself is truly beautiful as well. So, on to the next part of it. Exploration. Which is what I'm getting to now. There's a lot of things to do in just Mondstadt itself. Over in Wolfendom, you can get Ascension Materials for Razor, fight one of the world bosses... Then in Storm Terror's Lair, you can get these blue crystals and fight Storm Terror. Then over in the top right of Mondstadt, there is the Animo boss and the Cryo boss. And there is eventually, if you get to a point to where you unlock the Leyline Blossoms, you can do the Leyline Blossoms. The yellow ones will give you Mora, the blue ones will give you level up material and um, AR rank up XP. And then you go to the bottom part of Mondstadt, you have two things as well. You have the Electro Boss and the Spiral Abyss. Now, my recommendation for people is don't rush this game. But when you first start out, try to get as far in the Animo Archon story quest first. That means level up your characters, do some wishes, get the characters that you want, or at least try to, and progress in the story. Now, there is no punishment for rerolling accounts. I'm just putting that out there. If you reroll an account you won't get banned you won't get punished it's all good this isn't my first account right here and i have every four star and three five stars so take my word for it you will not get punished all right so then we go into dragon spine there's not a lot to do here well actually we're still in monstat but we'll get to that later so there's not a lot to do here except for your frost bearing tree. Now you collect 
these crystals all around Dragon Spine, bring them to your Frost Bearing Tree, and you get cool rewards. Same thing for collecting the Animunculus around Mondstadt and turning them in at the Statue of the Sevens. That increases your stamina. Same thing for Leo, where you have Geoculus that you search for all around and you turn them in. Now, I don't know the exact number for the crystals and dragon spine, but there's 60 um, animunculus in Mondstadt, and there is 131 geoculus in Liyue. Alright, now we get over to Liyue and the bosses that it holds. Oceanid, up in the top part of the map. Then you have the Pyro Regis Vine or fire flower. Then you have the geohypostasis, which is the geo cube. And then you have a world boss right here, child. So now we get on to the next part of the game. Daily rewards. Now each day you'll be able to unlock four daily commissions. Now, you do these four daily commissions, you get 20 extra primo gems. So you do the four, you get 10 primo gems per commission. Then you go to the Adventures Guild and you get 20 more primo gems on top of character XP, Adventure rank XP, a bunch of cool stuff and stuff that you will want to do. And also, a part of the daily rewards, you need to be doing your expeditions. I'm not going to turn mine in just yet because I still have four hours and five minutes on a couple of them and I just want to collect all of them all at once. So, yeah, you do those and you set them to the 20 hour one, you just leave it overnight, come back the next day, and you get a lot of rewards. Another thing is story quests. I don't have any here yet because the Ganyu one hasn't come out. So you do your daily commissions and you complete eight commissions. So that means two days worth of commissions you get one key. So six days in total, you'll get three keys and you'll be able to do a story mission. Now this story mission, it's pretty fun. You get to try out five star characters and you get decent rewards like primo gems and ascension materials, all that. Now, you can claim these in Mondstadt or in Liyue. But also, don't forget to claim your adventuring rewards. Most people that haven't grinded out the game, so you're going to start out right here, right? Most people make it to probably right here, and then they start looking at Genshin Impact videos. So at rank 10, you definitely want to pick up this sword, the prototype Rancor. It'll help you in the beginning of the game, and it's a good beginner sword. And you just keep going, and this is at Adventure Rank 12, you start getting Fragile Resin. Biggest pro tip to people, save your Fragile Resin till you get to about AR45. Maybe use one or two here and there, if you want to get, like, Ascension Materials, or at least to get a starter artifact set on your favorite character. But other than that, save your fragile resin. Um, so yeah, and you, when you reach adventuring 20, you have to do a world boss. Well, not a world boss, but you have to go to a domain and you go through this trial to raise up your world rank. And at some of them, like this one, you'll have to. Others, you won't have to. 
like this one, it just automatically does it for you. So yeah, that's what you mostly need to know about that. Then we get into the third part of the video, characters. So I'm just going to quickly go over my main DPS for my team, Chong Yun, right? I have him at level 80. You need to be a high adventure rank to get him to level 80. I think it's around AR 40. You can get your characters up to level 80. The weapon I have on him is the Prototype Archaic or Prototype um, Aminus. So your biggest thing when you get a character like let's just say I mean DPS like Razor Chong Yun, he's a special type of character because you could build him support or DPS. But anyway, when you get a main DPS character, you want to get two other characters to go along with your main DPS. Support element, healer, and support DPS. Now you see Razor, he's a main DPS, so I'm trying to find somebody maybe probably gonna build Sucrose to exchange him out but when you get a character you just want to level him up give him a weapon you know all that but when you get to around AR 30 AR 40 you're gonna want to start investing in artifacts now artifacts they're a pain in the butt but what's even more of a pain in the butt is leveling up constellate uh, not constellations that's you have to wail for that but leveling up talents because if let's just say I want to level up this talent right I'm gonna need this this and if you see right here plus level 70 storm terror reward challenge so also, you see I have very little Mora. There's a big Mora problem in the game. It it can be a little iffy sometimes. But if we go to the map, you get it from here. Not Storm Terror level 1, not 2, not 3, but you get it from 4. And the drop rate for to get the one that you want is pretty low. Now, it's a guaranteed to get one but not the one that you want and what's even more of a lower drop rate than these and the and the purple chunks is the prototype weapons and you need the prototype weapons to create the free to play weapons and all that jazz so we'll just go into character archive like I said I wasn't lying about having every four star and three five stars. So, yeah. Anyway, so with the characters, you want to build a team that will synergize with each other. Like, Bennett's my healer, but he's also fire. Shing Chu's my support, my elemental support. He's water. Chong Yun is my main DPS. He's ice. And Razor is just being there. So we'll look at these three real quick, right? So let's just say you have a support DPS like uh, somebody else, right? So you want Xing Chu with Chong Yun because you have the ability to freeze. Water plus ice equals freeze. And then you add electric to it. It's superconduct. You add ice, water, and fire, you get melt. You know, you get all these different things when you combine these elements. And that's pretty cool. Then we get on to boss fights. Like I mentioned them, but we'll get into them more in depth. For each world boss, so that excludes the story mode bosses like... Storm Terror, the Wolf, and Child, which Child's down here. But then you have these world bosses, like the Cryo Regisfine, the Animo Hypostasis, the Electro Hypostasis, 
Oceanid, Pyroregisfine, Geohypostasis. All those bosses cost about 40 resin to complete. 40 resin to get two to three of these, which is guaranteed. At least when you get rank up to past adventuring 30, you get two or three of those. Then you have a possibility of getting two of these, two of these, two of these, maybe three of the smaller gems and three of the medium sized gems. And then any artifact is just random. You're guaranteed artifacts, but they'll just be random. So basically all these bosses, the world bosses, will drop around the same thing, but the guaranteed ascension materials will be different. So you see for Animo it's a Animo butterfly, for the Cryo it's this thing, for the Electro it's that prism, for Oceanid it's that, for the Pyroregisfine it's that, and then for the Geohypostasis it's that. And then with the story mode bosses you have the possibility to get any of these artifacts any of these and the prototype weapons along with any of the crystals and that goes for that as well and that as well alright now the one downside to all these bosses, you may think, oh hey, I could farm out all these bosses, no problem. Well, you got a little thing called resin. Without, That's why you need the fragile resin, because it replenishes your resin. You see, I've used all mine already. And I saved up for a while. But I went hard on this domain, because it has the cryo artifact set. So, there's that. Now we get into domains, which is what you're mostly going to be doing your entire playthrough of Genshin Impact is domains. Now there is two types of domains. Actually, three. So, your first type is the story mode bosses and the temples. Now, this will be done through your Animo Archon story quest and your Geo Archon story quests. And eventually you'll get to the point where you'll have two of them and you'll get those done. You'll get like 60 Primo gems. It's really good rewards. Then you have Ascension Material and Talent. So level up materials pretty much. So here you have your Talent one right here so it's right by Springvale and then you have your other one in Joy and Karst for these and then you have your ascension materials you have one right here and one right here so these will be your character weapon um all of those ascension materials will be there. Then you have the artifact domains. So you have this one, which is your Crimson Witch of Flames, your Lava Walker, your Defender's Will, and your Martial Artist. All these, basically the two that you want out of this is the Crimson Witch of Flames and the Lava Walker. Um, also, since you see that the day reset, I have commissions now. But I'm not going to show you what they look like because they could take too long and make the video too long. Then you have your Noblest Oblige plus your Bloodstained Chivalry, Gambler, and Scholar. These three are honestly the best um, out of that domain. And then you have this one right here. You have your Archaic Petra. You have your Retracing Blood. And then Heart of Bravery. Heart of Bravery sucks. This one sucks only one that you really want out of this is Archaic Petra. Um, then you have this one, which has 
Defender's Will, Gambler. Gambler is actually a really good artifact set. Um, then you have Icebreaker and Ocean Conqueror. Now, with this set, basically, it's a really good set. The same thing with your water set. So that's why you want to farm out that. Then you have a domain up here, which gives you two electric and then resolution of Sojourner. So that's pretty much all your artifacts that you can farm. And each domain, no matter what it is, except for the boss and story mode domains, the boss domains and the wolf fight, so Storm Terror, Wolf, Child, all cost 60 resin to do. And to get 60 resin, 50 Primo gems. Anyway. But any other domain will cost you 20 resin. Now, we get on to probably what most people are going to be playing this game for. And that is... The Wishes. Now, you see, this... It shows that one day, 11 hours, 57 minutes for Albedo, his weapon, and then this is just going to stay here. So, how this works is every 30 days, this banner and the weapon banner will get switched out. At least, that's from what I remember. Every 30 to 40 days, give or take. So, yeah. Then you have a 5-star character and 3 4-star characters, and then you have two 5-star weapons and four 4-star four weapons. And that's just featured if you go into the details. All of the 4-star characters and all of the 5-star characters, except for the previous event wish characters, so Venti, Klee, Child, Zhongli, those are not in the uh, the pool here. But Albedo is, Mona, Diluc, Kaching, Chi Chi, Jean. Those are the characters, and then you have all of your four star characters, and then all of the four star weapons. Then you go into the weapon banner, you have no. F I think you might get four star characters, if I'm correct. Yes, you can get four star characters, but. All the five stars you'll get is weapons. And then your standard banner is just a mixed bag. Everything is included except for the character event wish, um, weapons, and characters. So, oh, hold up. And I forgot one more thing. Each wish, so this will cost you 160 Primo Gems for one, and for 10. 1,600. And if you get a dupe, you get 15 star glitter. Well, no, star dust. And if you get a dupe character, you get, I believe, 5 or 1 star glitter. Anyway, guys, this has been Ghost Gaming signing off. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.